Hi there and welcome back. This is part 9.5 of the Bolt series. So in this part, I'm gonna be using the knowledge that we got from the previous part, which was how to use RPC calls. And I'll be adding the ability of freezing the player. So right here, I have my character. And to show that the player is frozen, I'm actually gonna add the sprite of icicles. Let me reset the transform position and I'll move it up a little bit. So I'll just position it like that and I can turn it off by default because I want to turn it on only when the player is frozen. Now we need to figure out how we're gonna communicate over the network to freeze the other player. So in the previous video, we did set up our RPC using the photon bolt. Now inside here, I have another example of sending an RPC call and this time I actually send another parameter, which is Bob. The event name is my name. The first parameter is Bob. So how you use the custom event is for the event name, you use my name and then you can turn on one argument and that should send out. So if we run it right now in console, we should be able to see Bob. That's how you send the parameter. Now, if you followed along with all the series, by this time you probably know what to do next and how to use this to freeze your player. So you can do that on your own and if you want to see how I do it, I'll walk you through it. There is one thing that might be not really obvious and it's the fact that we need to send the view ID of our character in order to freeze the player. So how I'm going to set it up here is basically move all of this. I'm not going to be using say hi. So let's move it all down here and I'm going to create a custom event here. I'll name it freeze and I'm going to be getting one parameter. That parameter is going to be the view ID of the player that we're trying to freeze. In here, once I get this custom event, I'm going to send the RPC. And for the custom event that we want to trigger, I'll just name it RPC freeze so that we know the difference between them. For the first argument, we're going to send the view ID. For the target, I'm actually going to switch to all buffered. And that is so that whenever someone else joins the game, they're going to see all the players that are frozen already. Now, we need to find the player that we actually want to trigger the freeze logic locally. The only thing that we have to go off is the view ID that we're sending over the network. So the argument zero is the view ID. And we do have an option of finding a photon view by using the view ID. So we're going to pull that up using the argument that we receive, we pass it in as a view ID and try to find the photon view component that has that view ID. From this component, we can get the game object and on this game object, we can trigger a custom event and the custom event, I'll just name it freeze as well. So let me go over this logic again. From our player, whenever we click F, we're going to trigger this custom event argument and it's going to try to trigger a custom event RPC freeze over the network, passing the view ID of player that we want to freeze. Once we get that over the network, then we find the photon view by using the view ID that was passed over the network, get the game object and trigger a freeze custom event on that character. So now we need to go to our character and and the logic for triggering this custom event and also create a custom event that will be triggered by this trigger. So let's go and find our character, add a graph. So let's start with a simple task first. And here is the logic for freezing the character. So it's pretty simple. We have the custom event freeze, get the first child of the game object. And as you remember, that's the image with that icicle. I set active of the game object to true to display it. And the other thing that I do is set a variable frozen to be true. And that's an object variable that I've added right here. By default, it's false. So one of the places where this frozen is being used is right here. These are the two units that I added here to check if the player is frozen. If the player is frozen, then I don't want the player to be able to move. So that's how it's used here. Now, the most complicated part is actually this one right here where the freeze input I'm listening for the keyboard input and the key that I'm listening for is the F key. Whenever it's up, then I go through this logic. So the first thing, again, I check if the photon view is mine. Then if it is, I check if the player is frozen. We don't want a frozen player to be able to freeze other players. 
And here I have the logic for checking which players I can freeze. I use a physics 2D overlapping circle all to get all of the players that are, are in the radius of one. So I have a radius of one, you can change it if you want. The point of origin is the position of the player. And I use a layer mask to filter out just the players so that I don't have any other objects that are included here. Now, if you're still not sure how to create layer masks for a player, you can select your character and go at the very top. And right here, I have a player selected. If you don't have a player layer, go and layer, and you can name a one of these user layers to player. And that's how you set up that layer mask. So let's go back. The output from the overlapping circle all is actually an array or a list of collider 2D. So I use a for each loop to go through all of them. Now there's a couple of checks that I do to determine if this player is actually freezable or not. And the first check is to compare the game object and make sure that it's not my own. So I don't accidentally freeze myself. And the second check is to check if the player is already frozen. So if the player is already frozen, there's no point of trying to freeze him again. Both of those checks, I combine them with an or. So if one of those is true, then I want to skip that player and go to the next one. If both of these conditions are false, then I go and trigger the custom event on our photon bolt. And since my character is actually a prefab, I had to create a scene variable. So right here, I have a scene variable that is connected to that photon bolt game object that is inside our scene. And now I can use it here to connect it to the game object on which I want to trigger the custom event on. So the custom event is freeze and the argument that I pass in in this trigger is the view ID of the phone view. As soon as I trigger custom event, I don't want to freeze every other character that is inside of that circle of one radius. So I break the loop to make sure that I only freeze one character. Now you probably would want to go and find the nearest player before you freeze, but I decided to start with this. Finding the near player would add complexity to this graph. So with this, I think that is it for the logic of freezing our character. We can uh, now build and run it and test out, make sure that it's working like we expect. So here is our first player. Now let's launch our second player. There it is. Okay, both of them are working, everything seems fine. And now let's try to freeze our character. There you go. I clicked F and the character is frozen over the network. I can't move the character anymore and I can't click F to freeze the other character. Let's add another player. And this one should see that one of the players is actually frozen. And here we go. It sees that that player is frozen. If I click F, I can freeze the other character. And there you go. Now we've added the ability of freezing the player over the network. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, write in the comments. Click on the like button if you found the video useful. And I'll see you in the next video.